Hello, it's Frank, that one web guy, and I'm back with another video. In this video, I wanted to show you a cool site that I use occasionally. Um, that just did some really cool updates, and I just wanted to uh, redo the review that I did for uh, coolers. <laughs> That's what they call it, coolers. Um, cool colors, I guess. But you can see here that I've got a lot of different palettes. You can make palettes or explore palettes, generate palettes, or you know, um, explore trending palettes and things like that. There's a whole lot of different things you can do. Um, you know, you can uh, use now on your website. You can has an iOS app, Adobe extensions, and get daily inspirations for Instagram. So there's a lot of cool different things you can do with it. But I just want to show you the basics. Uh, you know, so what I use it for is you know you can generate colors. So you can come through here, and if you like a color scheme, but you just want to adjust it a little bit, uh, you know, you can lock down the different colors. So, uh, like if I wanted to keep a base color, like this middle color here. I can lock that color, and then if I hit the space bar, it's going to generate colors around that based off the one I have locked. Um, and then I can find ones that I like. I'll lock that one and generate others, you know, until you can get the color palette that you like. Um, if you see one that's fairly close, I can click here and I can then uh, generate. There's a color picker. Here we go. Um, you can then, of course, you know, adjust accordingly. Um, you can, I think there was an RGB adjuster. Yep, here you go. So you can adjust, you know, a little more red, a little more green, a little less green. You know, see it changes from green to magenta more, a little more blue. You know, so you can adjust it that way. Uh, or you can, of course, change to CMYK. If you know, if you're in the print industry, you're probably more familiar with that. You can generate the CMYK for that um, and generate maybe a color that way that you like. Um, there's lab colors, which is, you know, uh, different processes and stuff like that. You know, so you can see different, um, you know, different colors. There's prisma colors. There's names, you know, so if you have like a blue, uh, you know, you can search that way. And it shows you different Oxford blue, Yale blue. Um, I think there's one Twitter blue, you know, that type of thing. Um, I usually just use the um, hex decimal up here and leave it at that and just, you know, continue to pick colors that way um, and you can of course shift you know maybe I want to drag it down there and, you know and play with it that way and then uh, I've got those three locks if I hit space again it's going to you know keep generating colors until I have all of them locked or I've decided I'm done with it once I'm done with it I can save it I can save the palette I can export it um, and do different things with it so that's really cool uh, way to generate some color palettes you can, of course, then come up here and see what's popular. Um, there was Explore. Um, of course, I'm never going to find them when I want them. Explore. We can explore here, and it should, yeah, here it goes. Trending. Trending color palettes. So you can see what's popular. Um, if you've seen some palettes that you like, you can save them at any time. Um, I always like this one here that pops up. Um, you can hit Trending. You can hit Latest. Or you can select popular so you can see the different popular colors um, I like this one here too depending on what site you'd use it for um, and you can see how many times it was saved you know on each of those and to save it of course you'd click the little drop dots there and you can save the palette export the ballot so view the palettes um, maybe you want to send it to a customer you can click the copy URL it's copied so then if you went to a browser and open that up paste and go you could then, you know, your customer then can see those colors as well. And it's like, well, maybe they want to shift it as well. Um, if you don't want them playing around with it, you can just do an export and export it as a PDF or just an image, you know, and that type of thing. And just send them a palette that way as well, which works really cool. You can also do gradients, you know. So if you wanted to uh, create a gradient, you pick the start color and then the end color and... Um, and work on it that way so you can see the different rate gradient panels here um, and you can copy the CSS for that uh, so you can actually copy the CSS to make this um, and I guess a little geeky but if you're trying to create a gradient uh, for a page a page background a button color or something like that and you know what you're doing with the CSS you can do that here so uh, that's one way you can mess around with those as well a lot of different things you can do with this <clears throat> as I said you can explore gradients uh, contrast checker uh, you can see you know if the if there's really a good contrast they say these are a good a text color to background color you know so it's the rating is really good 
you know, just so a lot of different things you can do color wise from here. Now, one thing that I like, you can pick a palette from a photo. So maybe you have a, a logo <clears throat> that you have. So I'm going to upload an image, browse or drop. So I am going to go to my websites, my sites, and <clears throat> click on my main site here and see if I can just, uh, let's grab, looking for a particular one. Never find it when you're wanting it real quick, are you? Just had it here a moment ago. Let's just grab this one here. That'll work. Choose. It's going to upload it. And it's going to, you see it, so it did a palette based on the colors that it's seen in this image. <clears throat> so there's different shades of orange. Uh, the blue, which is in the arrow there, which you can't really see behind there. I'm not really sure it's picking up that color or that color, but though I guess that's probably in the <clears throat> outline of that. So I can export it or I can let's go ahead and close that. View palette. So you can see the, the palette schemes there. Just wanted to save it actually. So save palette and TWG that one web guy I can save and then we can go back to my viewed palettes Oops. Um, so I can actually go to my viewed palettes and then grab it that way For some reason of that panel there it is that's, that's what I was looking for um, so that there's the new palette that I have um, I may have it down here before but these are some of the other uh, projects that I've been working on, different sites that I have, um, and we can just do it that way, close that. So you can see there's a lot you can do with that. Um, you can, you know, as I said, create from a photo. You can change different settings, view tutorial if you like. You can check for color blindness or just the palette. So really cool uh, tutorial or a lot of uh, things that you can do with this, and I just found it really handy to use um, in, in doing that. So, oh, one thing that I wanted to show real quick is on saving this. When you go to save it, you can uh, save it, click on the colors after you give it a name, and you can decide if you want to, um, oh, come on, it's not going to do it, projects. There was a, when I went to go to save the palette before, maybe it's the type of way I was going to save it, um, export, sorry, that's what I was looking for, export. When I go to save it as an export as an image, you can change the color spaces to show um, the name if you want um, when you go to export it or, you know, if you want to show the Pantone or the CMYK, um, it'll replace these labels down here with that information. So if I wanted to send it off as a uh, to a client that the hex numbers would just kind of confuse them, I can send it to there is name. Uh, I could say test. Click export. So it's exporting that. Allow. So then when I open this, you can see here that it put it changed instead of E7674. It says light coral, melon, pell spring, bud. Um, you know, so it just makes it easier for the end user that's not familiar with the hex colors. I mean, I guess it does say it underneath, you know, so you have both, but it's just a lot easier this way. It's a lot larger for them to see and uh, just easier. So I hope you found this tutorial useful. Um, again, that's colors.co. I'll post the link underneath the video and uh, just hope you find it useful. Thanks.